Um, I'm very delighted to have this second session with you for the fintechs that have been selected for the second cohort. So we are the fintech enablers, uh, like a, you know, three musketeers or four musketeers, whatever you call it. So I just want to briefly introduce myself, then I hand it over to Gopal and Mohamed. So uh, my name is Georgiam Chokchetin. I have 20 years of banking experience and I Oracle this May. Uh, out of this 10, 20 years, the last 10 years, I was in fintech space. I was in or engagement sp innovation space and I was the head of fintech engagement of Emirates MBD. And today I will also, if the time allows, I will just give you some hints of how we can engage with the banks after the Gopal and Saad's sessions. And um, over to you, Gopal. Thanks, Gokam. Good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon, wherever uh, you guys are. Um, uh, thanks for investing your time with us today. Uh, we, I mean, I've been in financial services for over 20 years um, and uh, working with FinTechs for the last you know, 20 to 24 months. Uh, we have partnered with around 35 fintechs uh, in the uh, you know EMEA region, and when we say partner, we kind of uh, you know present joint go-to market with those fintechs, identify you know common problems that we can solve together, complementing Oracle, uh, and also help the fintechs reach Oracle's uh, you know customer base. So, you know, that's a complementary value that we would like to bring to this forum as well. And uh, in today's talk, we would uh, look at what are the uh, you know, key uh, differentiators in the Middle East Africa market and where we could possibly you know, help you and work together you know, beyond the, uh, the cloud technology conversation, which uh, you know, Saad would be explaining. Over to you, Saad. Thank you, Gorkham uh, Gopal and uh, the IFC FinTech team for giving us the opportunity. Welcome, good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are having a great day and will have a great day and weekend ahead, or if you have a weekend followed by today. Um, so my name is uh, Nassar Ansari. I manage the Oracle Cloud space for UAE. Uh, my primary focus is on the FSI industry and um, professional services in large group companies. I come with a good 15 plus uh, technology sales background. Prior to Oracle, I was working with Microsoft, so um, working in a lot of digital transformation projects uh, over there for large scale companies and moving them to the cloud, uh, keeping uh, a big role in you know, helping them move to the cloud and choose the cloud. And I'm going to be using the similar experience uh, with Oracle Cloud as we are, you know, launching our second region as well. We already have a data center here, uh, which was launched last year. So closely working with a lot of uh, FSIs uh, and FinTech companies, and I'd be happy to walk you through some of the reasons why Oracle Cloud and how we can help you uh, transform and you know move uh, your platform fairly quickly and have a great uh, GDP approach for the market. So thank you guys once again. And we hope you enjoy the session today. Yeah, and, and normally we have Tariq with us, but today he's sick, he's not able to join the session. But in our engagement, he will be helping us, especially on the technical side. Okay, just, um, I wanna start like my, my experience before I joined the Oracle, how was banks approach to FinTechs and what changed after the pandemic? So before the, uh, pandemic, I was in, head of in, innovation at a phase of fintech engagement and digital partnerships. So, but overall, when you speak with the business state, the branches were the main channel. If you look at the journey, even how hard you try for the digital transformation, most of the journeys were broken. And a lot of time, even you try to onboard a fintech, the IT teams, they want to build. And when they build, they build uh, in a waterfall manner. Uh, most of the, for the IT or for the procurement, fintechs is just like another vendor. And we are also thinking, banks were also thinking that, hey, governments need to work with us, just trust us. And uh, cloud is just like, okay, you do, you use cloud, just, if you use cloud, just for POC or there, if you, you don't have any other chance. And uh, after the pandemic, it's really a kind of a big hit. Uh, something really changed the, it was a negative thing, but changed the mindset positively for the fintechs. 
And digital becomes the first channel and banks realize that they should integrate the channels and journeys should be end to end and digitalized. And uh, rather than just like building it, they are more open to engage and partner with the FinTechs go on a SaaS model, model. And if they deploy it to deploy with an agile method, they see the FinTechs as a partner now. Uh, and then they realize that, okay, hey, there's FinTechs that government can work, especially in this support payments. FinTechs really did a good job. And to have this, all this agility, all this uh, engagement and partnerships, cloud becomes the first and foremost playground. And this really opens up the opportunities for the fintechs like you and uh, companies like Oracle Cloud to work together in a more effective and a more uh, productive way. And this is not what I'm just one my saying or my personal uh, feelings. If you look at the all the researches, you see that customer dramatically change their expectations and behavior. So they want, even after the, the COVID, they want to be digitally engaged. They want to have all the services available in their uh, digital channels. They, and already they engage in, in most of the clients in, in the older age, or let's say, uh, on, where we, we, we will think they will never switch. They already familiar with the digital experience and they already sign a document or they want to keep it like this. And over to you, Gopal. Sure. Uh, okay, you could <laughs> don't get confused with this uh, picture. It's, it's just to say we've we've come across several fintechs who have superb solutions like what you, um, many of you in this forum have. You know, be it a, 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 an invoice discounting solution or a financial inclusion solution. Okay, I've I've been there and done that. I've sold it in Singapore. You know, I I've sold it in Latin America. And you know, it, it's just a matter of it should do well in the Middle East and Africa as well, right? So, but um, there are great differences in the way this markets operate uh, compared to the other markets where you you know uh, you uh, have been, right? Just a few questions that you might have. You know, UAE itself is not it's not just a single country. The way Abu Dhabi operates, the kind of uh, uh, you know cybersecurity regulations that you have in Abu Dhabi, the compliance regulations that you have have in Abu Dhabi are different from what you have in UAE, right? I mean, in, in Dubai. Uh, what, what you have in Bahrain is different from what you have in Kuwait. Um, unlike the EU region, for example, or unlike the JPAC region, uh, each of these countries have different payment rates. You know, domestic payment rates are, are, are entirely different. The central bank regulations are entirely different. Um, you know, some countries have open banking, uh, open API mandates, some countries do not have. Right. So which countries have and how does that impact you uh, is something uh, we when we have the conversation, it, it would not just be a technology related conversation. So we would uh, look at what clients you would want to reach, uh, what are their KPIs, you know, uh, in terms of the chief technology officer, or the chief operating officer, or the compliance officer in that particular industry, right? So it's not just banks, it could be uh, you know, freight forwarding companies, it could be um, uh, you know, logistics uh, companies, it could be healthcare providers, education institutions. So FinTech, uh, you know, we could uh, position these across uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, client footprint of uh, Oracle, right? And what's the typical decision-making cycle, right? So uh, procured how much uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, importance does the procurement team pay uh, play? Does it vary from uh, you know enterprise to enterprise? Um, uh, you know, who should I actually pitch to uh, in the initial stages, and whom should I influence in the later stages? Um, and uh, uh, you know, wh what are the typical? What's the time to value? Right. So you are setting up space along with the AFC fintech hive, um, and. Uh, at what time should I expect a return, right? You know, is the first logo. When is it that, you know, I can expect? Uh, it's, it's, it's not small. It's not small. Like, and, you know, we can say that Gorkham can vouch for it. Four to six months is a typical sales cycle that uh, you can expect in this region. Uh, and if you uh, uh, go alone, uh, it's going to be much, much longer, right? Because uh, there are other dimensions that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, that uh, play a role as well. And uh, so we will be able, to, we are happy to discuss with you one-on-one -on -one, or if you want a deeper conversation, depending on your target customers on 
how we could approach this, right? Uh, next slide, Roka. Yeah, the other, uh, these are facts. Uh, of course, we are not uh, uh, you know, linking, referencing any uh, reference, but in, in the Middle East and Africa, typically the leadership uh, in the enterprises and banks, they change in every three years. It's not a rule, but that's the practice, right? Probably to keep people on toes. Um, so you know, that's something you need to consider if, if, some, if, you're, if you're pitching to an enterprise and if that particular individual is nearing his or her last six months or four months, you know, we can kind of help you say, okay, you know, it shouldn't be that when that individual is replaced with the new COO, you have to start your conversation all over again, right? So how can we optimize, uh, you know, uh, these uh, discussions? Um, many of the enterprises are, form, are owned by family offices, group companies. That's where, you know, Mohammed Saad and, uh, you know, can help you kinds of understands the holding structure uh, uh, unlike the other uh, markets, the holding structures are quite uh, intricately um, uh, tied to each other. Uh, you would see that one company is you know, related to the other one, and sometimes the decisions are taken at a group level, sometimes at individual level. So which doors to knock for what kind of problem that you are trying to solve, right? And what kind of budget uh, we are trying to seek. Uh, that's a that's, uh, you know, foundation. Um, system integrators play a key role in, in this region. Uh, so uh, unlike uh, you know, some of the other uh, regions, uh, but for example, in India, if you see system integrators are only for implementation, whereas in Middle East uh, and Africa, they are also uh, advisors to decide what kind of solution to pick. They are the ones who float the RFPs. So you know, how do we kind of uh, engage with the system integrators and how can Oracle help that, right? Um, regional references play a huge role, um, you know, in, in this part of the world. Uh, we might say, uh, you know, DBS Singapore is, uh, you know, is using us, but, you know, they will still say, okay, okay, do you know the local Dubai regulations? Do, do you support Arabic, right? Um, you know, uh, uh, do you know the commercial, uh, uh, you know, regulations that uh, are applied to SMEs in the region, right? So th these are things that uh, we will work closely with you when you approach uh, customers. Most of the stakeholders move from, you know, JPAC uh, for the for the senior roles. So if you are a starter from JPAC, that's a huge advantage uh, in case you carry those connects into the uh, region. Now coming, these are all a bit from the you know strategic level. Now coming to the tactical uh, level, getting synthetic data for executing POCs is not easy. You know, not all. Uh, enterprises or banks are ready with such synthetic, synthetic data. Not everybody have sandboxes ready and the POCs are not paid. So it could be long drawn. So how do we look at optimal ways where I have, you know, something with an Oracle cloud, which is, you know, you have free credits and the POCs, uh, you know, you could use that whenever there's a demand uh, rather than having a lead time. And that POC, how do we make it uh, with synthetic data which is relevant for your target customer and it's available on a need basis, right? This is something we can help you with. Um, and uh, the enterprises also prefer your solutions bundled. You know, Gorkham spoke about at post COVID, there is a positive tilt towards working with FinTechs, but still managing one FinTech relationship and uh, you know, for a half a million dollar, et cetera, is, is uh, still seen as a, as a big over, you know, overhead for uh, the enterprise clients. So they prefer saying, they prefer having a single neck to chew and you know, Oracle is willing to help you uh, on that as well, because you know, we could then, because we already have relationships, you know, some of the, uh, uh, you know, how do we kind of say, hey, we are bringing this FinTech. So, you know, you, you kind of have to uh, just talk to one party and we will manage it between us, right? And being an insider before proposing the solution is absolutely essential, right? When I say being an insider, what's the typical problem the COO has today? What's the problem that the head of, uh, you know, operate, uh, head of retail has today? Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, plugging our uh, value prop, uh, uh, you know, that's when I say our a joint value prop, it's not just the solution, the number of environments that you need, uh, the integration that you need, the data, how do I have to give the data in your model? Because most of, most of the FinTechs we see, you need data in your data model. 
and then it's an activity for the enterprise customer to you know, pump in data, extract data, and put it into your model. And that that work is never considered in your proposals, right? Uh, but and that's what takes maximum time for you know getting your solution uh, switched on. So um, the customers often expect. So, so let's say you have done a pitch, you have done presentations, and somebody likes it. They say, "Great, uh, I want to take this to the uh, Exco, right?" But they would say, "Can you tell me how much I can save with this? Can you tell me what kind of FTEs I can uh, reduce, or can you tell me the, the 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 new customers that I can get because of this?" We need to look at get some data from them, see how to quantify this. So, you know, uh, in case you are able to do it, fantastic. Otherwise, Oracle can work with you to bring in this quantification of business value of you know your solution being implemented at uh, a particular enterprise. Right. Uh, feel free to you know ask any questions. Gokum, next slide, please. Yeah. So, just want to tell you, it's about uh, when where so Oracle and Fentech High, we are just not going to give you a platform to say, hey, these guys are hosted on my cloud, or these guys are uh, you know uh, you know uh, cohort number uh, six or seven in the AFC Fintech. It's about understanding the existing landscape of your target customer. Uh, understanding the existing stakeholders of your target customer, uh, and the uh, and then saying how can we piece your solution to bring in value, right? So these are the additional two dimensions that we uh, bring together along with uh, fintech hype. Next slide, Gokum. So, what uh, by virtue of that, what do we uh, bring to the table is uh, we have apart from the cloud. We do have uh, our strength is selling to enterprises. Our strength is selling to SMEs and banks. Um, we have around 140 banks in the region, and um, we work with uh, large, uh, you know, enterprises across real estate, uh, you know, uh, retail, public sector, etc. So, your fintech solution, when it has to sit into those kind of uh, environments. Uh, you know, some of the public sector environments, they wouldn't know, you know how to work with uh, fintech. So let's say we want to uh, address a solution on early wage access, or we want to address a solution on uh, invoice discounting, right? Or uh, uh, or making payments to the blue collared workers of that particular uh, you know, enterprise. Uh, how does this work? Because they're, not, they're normally used to working with ERP, CRM, not a typical fintech solution, right? So we bring in that experience of, uh, you know, how to uh, implement this, you know, how the rubber meets the road. And um, uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, come up with joint go-to market for target countries. So let's say, um, you know, you want to actually launch in UAE and Saudi. These are your uh, typical uh, you know, target persona countries, not necessarily Qatar, uh, Oman, et cetera. We sit with you, understand, okay, why did you choose this? Was there any data behind this, or do you have contacts? Are there any common connects in these, uh, you know, accounts that you are talking about? Uh, for example, fund houses or uh, you know, uh, banks, etc. And then how do we go there together, right? We also have a fintech marketplace. Saad will explain how you could uh, get onto our marketplace. So that's going to give you brand visibility in the market. Uh, we conduct industry-specific knowledge shows. So if you have a uh, 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 a solution specific uh, uh, to a certain problem, for example, related to payment wallets. Uh, we every quarter we conduct uh, roadshows, and we could have you on our uh, you know panel to give you visibility and also the credibility uh, that we could bring to the market. And this would kind of uh, uh, complement your uh, marketing engagements that you might do on your uh, own as well. We also bring in domain specific consulting, uh, which is the context of this market, right? And I was talking about uh, local payments in each of the countries as a, as a uh, you know, different. So Qatar, you have Catch. Kuwait, you have Knet. How is that going to impact me when I, you know, uh, plug in my solution? Do I have to integrate with them? Do I have to talk to the regulators, right? So these are uh, things that we could help you with. Uh, you know, uh, for example, if you have to go to Egypt, uh, what does Fauri do? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, what is Daltex? How do I get into uh, the conversations with them, integrations, et cetera? So we kind of look at you as our as our customers too, uh, right? So for, for us, you are going to be our customers. At the same time, you're also our customers' customers. So, uh, you know, so there's a 
there's a triangular uh, uh, relationship and we would uh, want to uh, give in as much value as we can um, in this uh, relationship. Next slide, Gokul. Thank you. We did see this briefly in the first session. I'm not sure how many of you uh, attended uh, the one on uh, on Monday. So this is Oracle's you know, strength. So we have clients across manufacturing, logistics, telecom, uh, you know, healthcare, education. So some of the large uh, education institutions, um, hospitality. So you know, 96 percentage of the hotels uh, in Middle East and Africa use Oracle solutions, right? Uh, almost 72 percentage of the um, merchants. When I say merchants, the the SMBs and uh, food and beverage they use Oracle solutions. So all of them need loyalty solutions. They need credit decisioning solutions. Uh, you know they want they might want to offer P2P lending to their um, you know parents uh, who are uh, uh, you know uh, engaged with the with the school, right? Uh, they might want to offer something on accountable uh, receivable or anti money laundering. So how could we position your solution to these you know target customers uh, to expand your uh, you know target addressable market and also kind of narrow down the funnel um, and uh, and by virtue of it host them on on oracle cloud right so that's that's a big value where we are different from some of the other large cloud providers right so we help unlock the potential customer base for you we help unlock the narrative with which we can pitch to these customers together. And uh, uh, we also help with the insights of what are the problems that they are facing operationally, financially, uh, or, or, or from a compliance perspective. And can your solution you know, solve that uh, problem? Yeah, next slide, Gokul. So just to summarize, some of the synergies uh, that we see are the SMBs, which are uh, small and uh, medium enterprises, you can see, especially in UAE, um, and both Dubai and Abu Dhabi, there's a huge push. You know, if you look at Expo, it's all about SMBs, right? Um, the Ministry of uh, SME uh, is coming up with platforms on which SMEs can get low-based, uh, you know, discounted uh, loans, uh, platforms for e-invoicing, platforms where you can reconcile payments. So if your solutions fit into those. It's a great place to start with. And uh, uh, same for hospitality, uh, be it uh, food and beverage or uh, hotels. If your solution uh, has anything to do with QR code payments or wallets or, or gateways or buy now, pay later, et cetera. Buy now, pay later is a heavily, um, I would say, uh, crowded market at the moment. Um, so um, I, I, I'm sure you none of you have the solutions in that space. But if there are anything that is enriching the customer experience or digitizing, as Gokhan started off saying, anything that uh, you know uh, minimizes or irons out the breaks in customer journeys, uh, that will be a sweet spot for us to position uh, to our enterprise customers. Now, uh, the next slide, Gokhan, you know, is you can see that you are not alone. There are quite a few um, uh, fintechs like you with whom we are uh, we are working. Some of them small, some of them large uh, in this region, right? So be it in Nigeria, Pioneer, uh, Openway, ADM, these are all large European fintech who expanded to uh, Middle East and Africa. And, you know, they are uh, working with Oracle, um, you know, Paymentology, Saad is personally involved in, in, in uh, with Paymentology as a payment processor in Saudi. Um, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so these are some of the uh, clients with whom we work with. Okay, so uh, Sony has asked a question: uh, If is it mandatory for your solution to be on Oracle Cloud? Um, if you seek these services, uh, you know that is it's a it's a reciprocal relationship, Sony, right? So now there's something in it for us. So if you uh, if we are in the journey and we know, right, it's it's not a, a, a one or two meetings that we need to have to with the customers. These are meetings that we need to have with you, with the customers over a period of two to three months. So it's a huge investment from our side as well. And we'll be, and, and look at it this way, Swani. When we take you to the customers, the customers will invariably have an Oracle footprint already, right? So these, 
these are clients who have worked with Oracle. They know Saad in person. They know, uh, you know, Gokum in person. So, uh, and they have this relationship over, you know, uh, three to five years, right? Let me I take a simple example, Majid al Patel, for example. Right? It's, a, it's a big group. And they, we have an example or, uh, you know, uh, we have a relationship already. So, and uh, if we say, hey, this is a, is a particular, um, you know, fintech that we are bringing, as an add-on, we just put it on top of whatever intra that we have. Right, so it's it's easier for them to make the decision rather than bringing a, a, a new cloud or a new infrastructure. So I won't say it is mandatory. You know, we are happy to open doors even if you are on some other cloud. For example, if you go to a customer and they say, "I only prefer Azure. I am not okay for any other cloud at the moment." It doesn't mean that, "Hey, Sony, sorry, I'm not going to introduce this customer to you." We will absolutely right, I, and that's why we are here. But the longer conversations, uh, we prefer if you could qualify on Oracle as well. Hope that clarifies. Sorry, we lost you, uh, Gopal. Okay, when did you lose me? I think uh, there might be an audio issue. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, that's okay, Sony. If you you know we could connect uh, uh, separately as well, but I hope so. We will connect you, but the journey. Uh, if you also seek that support, we prefer you to be qualified on Oracle. And Saad can confirm qualifying on OCA yeah, Cloud is not complicated, right? It's, it's quite simple. Thanks. Thanks, Gopal. Um, and yeah, I was going to say that while I explain the why Oracle Cloud to you, uh, to you guys, I think you'll understand the answer to your question as well. So I think... Um, it's, it would be interesting to see uh, if people can actually let us know. When people talk about cloud, there are only a few names that kind of pop up, right? Azure, AWS, uh, and I'm sure many people don't even know that Oracle is in that space, or maybe they only know Oracle as a SaaS-based offering for our fusion or ERP customers. Um, but I'd like to you know, just emphasize the fact that Oracle Cloud is or has equally or far more better offering and services than the other cloud providers as well. Um, so why Oracle Cloud? There are multiple benefits. I mean, there is a uh, price and performance benefit. There are SLAs that are better or you know what we offer more than Azure and, um, and AWS. Um, the, the flexibility of deployment, uh, you know, some customers just run specifically on their specific platforms. We are quite uh, open and flexible and can endorse you know, different uh, platforms as well. Security is uh, a very, very key aspect. And when I say security, Oracle basically is uh, you know, built from security ground up. The methodology that we did in building our data centers was keeping security in mind. What does that mean? That means is that all other data centers or pro cloud providers are, you know, considered as Gen One. We are Gen Two in terms of technology. Uh, what does that mean? Basically, the way it's been architected is that we separate the the, the kernel or the hardware layer from the OS layer, and that kind of uh, gives a more superior uh, security. And we'll talk about, you know, a couple of other things uh, down the line as well. Program, um, can you please move on to the next slide? So um, this is a, a very important slide as well. Uh, the, the global footprint of Oracle the data center regions. Um, so by the end of, of this year, we will probably have around 36 uh, regions live. Right now, we already have 29 uh, in play. Um, the, the, the most important factor for the people in this region, specifically in the Middle East, is that we have a data center both in KSA as well as UAE. Um, the data center in Dubai where UAE was launched last year. And second region is also coming up uh, by before the end of this year. And another region is coming up in, um, in KSA as well uh, by the by middle of next year. Uh, and as you can also see, we have uh, Azure Connect 
in some of the regions. So if somebody you know says that we also have Azure as a provider, can we still work with Oracle? Yes, there is an integration and we do provide that connectivity. And if it's not out of the box connectivity, we have different solutions to offer that. Uh, next slide, please, Program. So this kind of sums up uh, the, the complete cloud services uh, that we have. Uh, it's broken into you know, different parts. And uh, as you can see, the, the, the common layer is the infrastructure layer. So we provide infrastructure as a service where you know, we, have, we have compute options and do containerized. Uh, you can bring your own OS images. Uh, the, the networking is also uh, an option, you know, a very secure option that's there. Um, from a developer perspective, there's also a huge offering on the on the DevOps stack, you know, for all people who want to have a low code kind of uh, development and a very, very quick GTM uh, time frame where you want to launch a product, develop it and launch very quickly. We can, you know, offer that with the, with the solutions. And there is also infrastructure as a code that's also, uh, that's also available there. Um, like I said earlier, we know that Oracle is there in the SaaS segment. So basically what that means is we do provide software as a service for our, you know, tens of thousands of ERP customers. All of those run on OCI, right? So, so that could be, you know, a huge endorsement of, of letting the people know that all of those customers who are running thousands and thousands of queries or running a software as a service or, or running their business on Oracle Fusion is hosted on uh, the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Um, data management. So the Oracle is known for its database. We all know that. So you know what better company can offer you a comprehensive data management solution. So we have a platform as a service to offer our database as a service. We can also you know bring your own license to Oracle if you have an Oracle database. And if you don't, you can use the Oracle database as a service. The, the key thing is, if you look at how the enterprise license for database is structured, you have to buy different options separately. The Oracle uh, Pass service, it's available out of the box. Um, and you know we complement that with our analytics and autonomous database uh, solution as well. So again, a comprehensive uh, list of offerings, you know, we can spend the whole day uh, discussing about that, but just to give you an overview, uh, there are different uh, segments available and you know whoever is interested can probably have a one-to-one -one conversation with us on that. Uh, please go to the next slide. So like I said, um, in terms of differentiation, we offer end-to-end -end, uh, SLAs uh, from availability on performance and manageability. Our competitors only cover the availability aspect of that. We also uh, give you an SLA on performance and manageability. We're the only cloud provider that does that. Next slide, please go. Uh, we, we discussed about price offering, right? Um, and when you say that you, so yeah, what I would want to do is discuss the, the question uh, that we had a bit on the, you know, if we have multiple cloud. So, we, we support multi-cloud. Every customer has, you know, an option to go for a multi-cloud approach. Uh, but the idea is that all other competitors, specifically, you know, people like AWS, their prices vary from region to region. We have a standard price across the globe, and we do not change prices. Whether you're hosting your service in Frankfurt, Amsterdam, in the U.S., or in the UAE, so there's a standard, you know, price approach across the region. So this could be another key factor for you all to choose or consider work. Next slide, please. Uh, and, and the way we, we structure it, the way we offer it, we have two options. You can look at the pay as you go option, or you can look at an annual flex option where you sign up a contract for 12 months, which is a huge spread of contract. Um, it simplifies your, your you know, payment term. It adds some value in terms of price locking. It also um, uh, offers you know some sort of discount, and then it comes uh, with a lot of support. Obviously, if people don't want to commit to that, we still have the uh, PSG option. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Um, as you can see, these are all the uh, global compliance that we follow, you know, from a regional to industry to government and global perspective. Um, and uh, in, the, in the FinTech or the finance space, we provide PCI PSS uh, certification. You can see it's approved by FINMA. Um, it's approved as a GDPR globally, you know, SOC 1 and ISO certification. So all of that is available and you can also provide uh, the local uh, UAE uh, certification. So we are approved uh, by that in, in Saudi, we are approved by uh, summer regulations. So, uh, so those things are all taken care of. Next slide, please. So um, what's next, right? So uh, we can offer a pre-sales engagement uh, with people who are interested, with a technical architect that can work with you and you, you know, uh, come up with the comprehensive solution. Uh, work on whatever platform that you've built your uh, solution on and see how that can integrate with one of the cloud. We can identify uh, different areas where we can, you know, add value to the, to the program. Let's say you do have, you know, uh, your platform running on X and Y uh, provider. Let's look at different use cases where you can benefit from your other cloud. A lot of people, because of the data regulations, uh, especially in Saudi Arabia, want to use the OCI because we have a data center region there. A lot of people who have a footprint across the Middle East want to use Oracle because we have a data center in the UAE as well as TSA. So, you know, different uh, people have different priorities. We can accommodate that. Uh, what we can do is create a pilot environment for you. It's like a, a free POC, free pilot, and we can invest some credits from Oracle for you to test it uh, and, you know, look at the, uh, the, 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 the uh, platform that you have, see if it uh, runs seamlessly on that, if there's any application vulnerability, you know, we can, you guys can test uh, on that as well. Uh, and obviously we can work on a migration plan. If you want to move from one cloud provider to another, we can work with you on that. So pre and post sales sale service is available. Uh, we can work with you one-to-one -one on any of those requests. Uh, so to summarize it, if people are interested, my, my credentials are given below. I manage sales for the uh, FSI industry across UAE. Please do reach out. Please note my email address. I'll be happy to assist. Thank you. Uh, unless uh, I don't think we have anything else, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, so just want to take the user time. Do we have any questions? Yeah, let's look at the questions. Uh, I think we answered uh, one, uh, how they can reach us. You already share your credentials. You can reach us through our LinkedIn profiles, emails. Yes. You can, of course, and the main source is the APC FinTech Hive. They have all our contacts. Please, uh, anytime, even maybe you don't need it now, but for the later engagements, please reach out to us. If you have any questions about a bank, is it our customer? Can we help them? them? We, we love to help you on this as well. Uh, can we show the marketplace? The marketplace. We can. Uh, we can connect with you uh, separately on that. We can show you that. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. possible right now. Yeah, but we can. Uh, let's make a note of that. Uh, work on please. Okay, I, I already taken my note. Yeah. Uh, Mufid, and, uh, just uh, to uh, answer Sony, I, I think uh, I could. Uh, I could. I could show that if you could uh, just uh, quickly, if you can. Yeah. Stop yeah. Your sharing I'm stop sharing. Yes. Over to you, Gopal. Thank you. Yeah, this is how it looks like. Okay, so Oracle FinTech in, in an ecosystem, um, you know, for uh, it's a marketplace uh, and for Starker Startup Connects, you could also find the large ones, right? So Personetics is, is quite big uh, in terms of uh, what they offer. Uh, we have Reason that's quite big that they are what they offer. So it's also, it's also cataloged for different uh, you know uh, types so you know what are the uh, uh, the because we, we have startups catalog specifically for personal finance management for banking as a solution for uh, uh, you know for bnpl etc right so you could just i will anyway share the link but when you search for you know uh, oracle fintech marketplace you know you would uh, get the uh, public site directly gopal can you share the link on the chat if, if sure sure might? So if you, uh, I will definitely. So you can see here for for EMEA, for example, 
the different categories here. So commercial banking, insurance, risk and compliance, wealth management, payments. So this is how you know your your logo would also be uh, you know appearing here for someone who's keen to look at, uh, and we can help you. Uh, but thanks for asking that question. I'm going to send this link. And beside this marketplace, we also have marketing materials, which is all the sales rep can access globally. So if we have a successful case and we can make a use case out of a success, so they can be all open to Oracle employees, sales teams to share with different clients as well. So you will be accessing globally as well. Okay, I'm just taking any, any other questions. Okay, yes. Thank you. Um, I think we have just one minute left. Uh, I'm actually, I'm also a mentor for the FC FinTech Hive. Uh, so you can also reach me about Oracle and also any other things that you think that you need a mentorship, uh, how to engage with the banks and everything. I'm happy to help you as well. And you have Mohammed and Gopal, we're happy to help you. Don't think it's just like about Oracle. We, we are lo really looking for a long-term relationships and we know that we want to help you on this region and also increase our footprint uh, with you also where your home base is as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, thank you. and I think that's a wrap. We'll just give yeah. a few more seconds if anybody has any questions, otherwise. Yeah. Thank I'm you also sharing everyone. everyone. Sharing my uh, email as well, so that if you want to reach out to me, uh, I mean, so as I mentioned in the very beginning, we are like the three musketeers. We are most of the time, uh, especially in the uh, fintech and the finance industry, we are always approaching the fintechs and the clients together, three of us. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we can wrap it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great weekend uh, for the ones in, in UAE and uh, MENA region. Uh, visit.